so I think I decided what deck I want to play. What's that? Trick Stars. Chainburn? No, just Trick Stars. Deja vu. Why do you say that? Oh, I don't know. I just think they're the best option for me right now because they're not too combo oriented, I guess. Well, then why don't you play. I don't know, True Draco or Counter Fairies or something with a lot of traps. Because, like you said before, traps are only good going first and the game is too fast. Well, yeah, but that was before the new ban list and before Extreme Force came out. A lot has changed the past couple weeks. Can we please just break out the ultimate deck already? Keeping up with all this is way too much work. When it's time for that, we'll know, okay? But you're just being lazy. Well, you're the one sitting here talking to me when you could be making a video. Yeah, that's right. He thinks he's so cool. What was that? Nothing. I am the one, the way your son don't need a gun. All right, you guys, before I get started with this video, I have to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to all my patrons. You guys just make this happen. You guys help me out so much. And I know I don't show everyone's names, you know, like every single video, like I probably should. And I don't think you guys as nearly as much as I should and stuff. But I just want to thank you all right now. Thank you all so much for, you know, for uh, donating money to me and just, you know, helping keep keeping this going and, uh, you know, helping me do what I love to do. You guys are just, you guys are amazing. You are the real MVPs. If you guys haven't checked out my Patreon rewards, guys, I actually just added some more, um, including being able to get me to go to a tournament near you and meet me in person and stuff. So if you guys are interested in that, then be sure to check out my Patreon. The link is down in the description. And I also have to give a huge shout out to everyone that is participating in the Discord tournament, guys. It's going to be epic. And I have decided that we're going to be showing the top four matches, at least at, at the very, very least the finals. I want to do the top four. But um, at least the very finals, we're going to be, uh, you know, doing some sort of uh, live stream or at the very least, you know, a video of me commentating over the match, you know, or maybe even me dueling the, the person who wins like to boot, you know, along with winning the match. I don't know. Something like that. I really want to do just something extra and get involved, you know, in the tournament, you know, with all my Discord people. They are just really, really great. But since I know that not everyone was able to enter the tournament in hopes of winning a match, if you want 10% off of any match, guys, I'm seriously thinking of you right now because I don't always remember to say this, but it's something that you can always do, okay? If you want 10% off of any map from metamats.com, enter in the code Eugene versus Jesus. You enter in that code, you get 10% off of any mat. But that is enough gibbering on, guys. I had to get all of that out. I'm sorry. I haven't been doing my plugs like I should be and stuff, so I had to just bombard you there. I'm really, really sorry. But we're going to be talking about YCS Atlanta this weekend. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the viability of trap cards for YCS Atlanta this weekend. I know YCS Atlanta is going on as I'm speaking right now. You know, People are probably watching, you know, if there is a live stream going on, people are probably watching the live stream, uh, keeping up with, with, with what's going on and stuff. But um, I wanted to make some notes and make, you know, some observations before we know um, what is, you know, before we, uh, you know, see what comes out of this weekend. Because this weekend will decide our future metagame. It really, really will. I will explain that more in a minute. But, um, you know, I wanted to speculate um, as to what is going to be going on this weekend based off of the regional results from last week. So that is where I'm going to be going with this video. I'm going to be talking about my observations from this past weekend and apply them to what I think might happen this weekend in this YCS going forward. And um, I'm going to start this off by, you know, uh, going over what I said, you know, a second ago, guys. Um, this this YCS is very, very important and it will define our metagame. And the reason why is because people are going to net deck, like literally look at those deck profiles that are going to come out of this weekend and copy those and improve upon them or just use them, you know, in general as a template to, you know, as to, you know, knowing what to play and, you you know going forward that is exactly what people do I do it that is what everyone does guys you look around at what is winning events you know what is topping to give you an idea of what everyone is playing and once you know what everyone is playing you're able to you know build those decks and practice those decks and uh, that way you you know how to beat them okay and uh, so that is why um, you know this YCS is very very important because it's going to define what everyone is going to be playing so on um, that being said um, what is going to be used to define this YCS that is that is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the regional results. We're going to start with, um, you know, what a fan sent me last weekend, okay? We're going to start here. So this fan's name is, and I'm going to butcher this, Quinn Vrishvogel? Vrish, 
Vigil. Shout out to that guy. Between people's names and just Yu-Gi-Oh cards in general, well, guys, I can't pronounce anything. I swear I can't pronounce anything anymore. Okay, so um, what, what he did is he actually, I'm going to have the uh, deck profile on your screen now, but there's this regionals, okay? He took first place in the Netherlands, okay? At a regional in the Neverla Netherlands playing Dino Rabbit. Not, not playing dinosaurs. He was legit playing Dino Rabbit. I'm, once again, I'm going to have the um, deck profile on your screen now so you guys can see it. But um, it, it really it, it really piqued my interest when I saw it. Because not only was it just like, what? First place Dino Rabbit deck profile? What? You know, you know what I mean? That's insane. Um, so not only uh, did that pique my interest, but he also sent me his uh, matchups and stuff. And his matchups were, were this, okay? So round one, he said he two he went 2-1 against True Draco. Round two, he went he 2 0 Ritual Beast. Rounds three and four, he tr uh, he 2 0 True Draco. Round five, a Dinosaur with Diagram 2-0. Uh, round six, a Zombie Swarm 2-0. So he mostly 2 0 his opponents, which is really, really funny. Um, but here's, here's uh, you know, and there's nothing really uh, special about that uh, unless you really, really look. Um, look at this, though. If you look at these decks that he went up against, um, all of them play traps. True Draco and stuff play traps. My point being that not only was our guy playing, you know, a go first deck, being Dino Rabbit, you know, making Logia, you know, here's my Logia, I have a response for you, you know, plus he's playing trap cards and stuff. Very, very good deck, by the way. Very good deck list. Um, not only was he playing, you know, that style of go first, but, you know, he was going against Ritual Beast and True Draco and stuff that share similar strategies it's like you know going first and you know playing more traps is okay now not only do you have to i mean so in other words what i'm trying to get out here is you know before you know when you get let's just say uh, let's just take pepe formats or you know pick your pick your crazy powerful deck okay i don't care from what era i really don't care okay just take your super powerful deck um instead of building a turn one unbeatable board okay like with uh you know in cyber dragon infinity you know etc etc instead of you know building the super reactive unbeatable board going first and winning that way, um, it is now more okay to have traps and stuff again. And um, that's really, really interesting because, you know, in, in the past we have seen, you know, in just this past format that just wrapped up with this new ban list and stuff, and even continuing on with this ban list, um, hand traps are still very, very, very powerful. Um, and, and to see um, decks be able to play more traps and to, you know, engage in a slower style game is very, very relieving. It's very cool. And I think that that might be a huge indicator, I mean, at least a little bit, as to what is going to take place at YCS Atlanta this weekend. It's just another, what I'm getting at is that it's another contributing factor as to what is going to, um, you know, cause um, the results, what's going to, you know, force the results from this weekend. Really what I'm getting at here, and I'm just taking a long time to say, is that Yu-Gi-Oh! appears to be slower, and it appears to be slower in a very good way, in a way to where it's gotten to a point to where, you know, it, it is still the beginning of the format, but there is a lot of diversity, guys. We're seeing Shadal stuff, we're seeing True Draco stuff, we're seeing Spirals, we're seeing Pendulum stuff, we're seeing all of these different decks top, and we're seeing them actually play more traps as well, and we're even seeing Burning Abyss again. But people were feeling confident enough to play Burning Abyss again, and that's the point, guys. People were feeling confident enough to feel like that that's a good deck choice to make and to bring to a tournament, which is a really relieving thing. It truly is. Likewise, looking at this tournament report here from our guy Quinn again, um, he went against even a Ritual Beast deck, and we all know, you know, Ritual Ritual Beasts. Uh, ritual Beasts are, you know, a deck that take advantage, like, full advantage of playing three Torrential Tribute, which is something that directly was caused, you know, by this ban list. This ban list, this newest ban list brought Torrential back to three. So, to say that, you know, this ban list didn't have some sort of, you know, really positive impact on the format in terms of, you know, slowing everything down and bringing, you know, more like, slower decks into light and making them viable, to say that that's not true is a little, I don't know, not correct. And all I'm saying, guys, is that seeing more rogue is a good sign. I mean, it sucks playing in a, in a format, you know, with too much rogue. I, I am still on that side of the fence. I know a lot of you guys kind of disagree with me there, but I, I like to know what the, what's a side deck and stuff like that, and I don't really like playing, you know, not knowing what I'm going to play against. I like, you know, more uh, well-rounded formats. That's just me, though. But at the same time, though, a, um, you know, a, a format with a lot of variety, what a high variety format signifies is that people, you know, players are 
really confident in playing whatever. There's two ways to look at it. You can look at a format like, oh, well, there's a lot of variety, so it's it's a scrub format. You know, it's a bad format. Um, and I'm kind of leaning more towards that way. But but at the same time, though, I also see the other point of view here, where it's like, hey, there's a lot of variety. That means there's a lot of people confident that they can play whatever they want and actually win with it. That's really really good. Like I said, I'm more this way than that way, but you, you know me. I try to see you know both sides of just everything. But moving on here, you can see that you know a high variety format. You know, in other words, people just playing whatever deck. Who knows what's gonna make it into top cut if there's a lot of people just playing whatever. Um, the tournament results might actually surprise you because I mean, just look at this regionals I was just talking about that our guy Quinn, he won the whole thing with Dino Rabbit? With Dino Rabbit in 2018, that's incredible. Granted, it was a smaller regional, I mean, but still, he was playing against some meta decks and um, on, obviously, there's gonna be, you know, people playing, uh, you know, uh, Pendulums there, there's gonna be people playing, you know, uh, Paleo, there's gonna be people playing I mean, uh, info to people playing. I mean, just a spiral. Pick your deck, okay? There's going to be all these different players. Uh, and for him to come out on top, for him to, you know, come out on top after all of that is really, really impressive. It's very, very impressive. And I have to thank Quinn again, if I haven't thanked him enough already. Like, thank you again for sending me that. And another notable thing to add to the discussion here is that not only do people, you know, have more faith in their decks and stuff and think that they could win with whatever deck, but people, you know, and, and not only are people having more confidence in trap cards, for example, people are playing more solemn strikes, people are playing solemn morning, people are playing three torrentials, you know what I mean, etc. It just go it just goes on. People are playing more traps, but people are also actually having more faith in cheaper hand traps. In other words, Ash Blossom is still a good card, but it's not as good as it used to be. And uh, just uh, just to provide an example off the top of my head here, the best example that I can provide, you know, that it, that is uh, relevant to our current format, that's off the top of my head, is um, you know, Effect Veiler versus um, versus Ghost Ogre against um, Electromite. Okay, um, both of those cards. I mean, uh, uh, Effect Veiler especially because it's you know it's a common now both of those cards are very effective against electromite i mean because effect veiler duh it stops its effect but um ghost ogre is really really good against electromite as well because once it's something once it comes out and activates you know to stack your extra deck you can ghost ogre it to where it goes away and your opponent doesn't get those zones that is very good and ghost ogre is you know not the uh, cheapest hand trap you know it's not as cheap as effect veiler for example but it is still way cheaper than ash blossom and it's still a really good card and of of course, both of those cards, Ghost Ogre and Valor, are also really good against double helix. I mean, just pick your monster effect that activates, pick your, pick your, you know, um, Link monster that comes out that has an effect that activates that you can ogre, you know, off the field. Uh, pick your monster and you can see how that's really, really good right now. So those are the points I'm going to leave you with today, guys. That's the hope I'm going to leave you with today, is that just about anything can be playable, at least, you know, in, in this moment of time. I mean, players have full confidence in their decks for the first time in what feels like a a long time which is really really great and then another thing I'm gonna leave you with is don't underestimate some cards that you've discounted like effect Veiler you know like ghost ogre and stuff if you if you think that your cards you know just because it's not ash blossom just just because your card isn't ash blossom doesn't mean it's not good is what I'm trying to say and, and that, that's something that you guys just have to uh, you know kind of get over that is just not the right mindset to have guys I mean if you make the right card choices and stuff and you play well then you will top a tournament I promise Except for me, because I didn't get to go to Atlanta this weekend. I'm stuck in Oklahoma. Subscribe! <laughs> <laughs>